What's up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the CSS grid once again, because yeah, it is so awesome. And specifically, we're gonna be looking at how to tackle this little, you know, very common pattern and how to do so the junior developer newbie way, which involves the use of media queries. And then I'm gonna show you how to do it, the leveled up master 1000 full stack developer uh, steroided up monster just expert way of doing it without media queries in the use of auto fit auto fill also what the difference is between both of those along with using min max repeat and all that good stuff so if you haven't yet of course it's a no-brainer hit the damn subscribe button and let's get started before we begin Linode makes it easy and affordable to host your website your portfolio your online store and more on whatever technology stack you use getting up and running is fast and easy with one-click app installs like WordPress and Drupal with back-end access to your server customization and scaling options are all but limitless if you just need something small like an online portfolio to showcase your work, Linode has you covered. If you need to manage tons of clients' websites and reliably serve them to millions of visitors, Linode can do that too. So sign up using the link below in the description to get $20 in credit on your new Linode account. All right, so let's real quickly set things up. I already have an index.html with the CSS folder with the main.sass file. I'm using the uh, live sass compiler and also to get this up with the server, the live server compilation extension, whatever you want to call it. You can go ahead and install both of those in the plugin sections if you want to follow along. So for our HTML, it's going to be dead simple. We're just going to have a div class of container, and that will be our grid container for housing um, our list. And so I'm just going to have, I could have used an unordered list. I decided just to go this route instead, um, each one with a quote, um, a paragraph with some lorem ipsum text. I put like lorem 15, so just like 15 words of that whole lorem ipsum thing going on and then also um, let me make sure i'm not going on top of the, the html too much all right i'm good um and then we'll also have a span john doe whatever you get the point let's uh replicate that so we'll have four of these and um of course it's not updating oh there it goes finally geez it's supposed to like update on safe wasn't doing it anyhow so now we're gonna go to our main dot sass all right to set this up and I'm gonna show you the bad way first. Uh, I'm not gonna say bad way, but I'm gonna call it the, the verbose way. You know, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's a lot more code. You're dealing with a lot more media queries. But before we get to that point, let's just do some basic setup real quick. So we're gonna take our container and we're going to uh, give it some padding, like 3M units, push, push things away, you know, basically. And then uh, display grid. Now, when you just do display grid, they're not gonna float left with each other. Like if you wanted that, display flex will do that, but we're gonna do the grid because, hey, this is a, a grid tutorial, right? Grid gap, um, we're gonna set the two EM units and <laughs> grid grap, are you kidding me? All right. And then also we're gonna have, uh, let's set up our other, our other stuff first, like the styling. So our quote, um, I'm not gonna sit here typing these out, it's just uh, three, properties you know just to set things up a little bit we're going to use that little soft shadow aesthetic that i kind of like um also we have two other rule sets our paragraph margin top zero just to get ourselves some equal white space around situations and then also our um, span which is like the john doe part um, i'm going to type this or paste this in so we have a span right here um, and then I'm just using the before selector to put in that little dash there. And that's it um, in terms of our styling. So here's the way that I, I would not suggest doing it because you're gonna be dealing with a lot of media queries. Now by default, everything's collapsing uh, on, the, on, the, on a mobile viewport. And that's basically probably what you would want for the most part. Um, but now let's go ahead and adjust this so that I, we can make it we can make these different elements start to um you know situate themselves in a, in a more in a manner that makes more sense um, so we can create columns right so like maybe right here we can fit two so one here one here one here one here right two rows two columns so the junior developer will probably do something like this we're going to do media minimum width we'll say like 550 pixels and we'll say container grid template columns columns rather and they would do something like repeat two columns we want 
and they're going to be of equal uh, distance, so one fractional unit. So we start here, and then we come here, all right? It works, you know, nothing entirely wrong with this. Let's say at a, maybe 750, maybe 200 more pixels, we'll just do repeat three, right? So we come out, 750, there we go. So we're at, we're at um, absolute mobile, no media query, our next one, and then our next one, right? And then we'll say when we get out to maybe 200 more pixels at 950, we'll go ahead and say four. All right. So this is really simple stuff, obviously. I me increase the zoom a little bit. But there's a much, much easier way of doing this. And now I'm going to show you the better way. So I'm going to just delete all. Of, actually, I'm going to leave this one at 550, but I'm going to delete the other two. So it's that that's empty. And what we're going to do is just change this up. So we're going to add one call, one property to achieve what we just did there. All right. So the property is still going to be our grid template columns, right? So grid template columns. And we're going to say repeat as well. So we're going to use the same repeat function. And this time, let's start off. Um, I'm not going to show you like the ultimate way yet. I'm going to start off just doing, hey, we have four columns. And maybe we'll do desktop first just for a second, just so I can um, demonstrate something. And we'll say we have repeat four, uh, maybe just for 250 pixels, right? So when we do that, we can see that it's going to create scroll bars at the bottom here like that. And it's it's not fluid either. So you could say, well, if you have four of them, we could just do 25%, right? Which, yeah, you could do, but it's not responsive, obviously. So what we can do here is instead of that, we can put in min max, we'll say 250 pixels, and they're going to be one fractional unit. So now at least they expand but at a certain point, the minimum of 250 pixels per container here, it will stop. But this also creates scroll bars, right? We don't want that either. So the final step to this is to change this here to auto fit. Now look at what happens. So we're out here. Now once it hits that 250 pixel point, it's just going to create rows automatically. Look at that. Look at that. So we have no media queries, even though we have a blank one now we're going to use in a second. Uh, so yeah, we, we just have this one single property that helps us create uh, really a responsive uh, sort of grid system just from one CSS property with the power of the CSS grid. Now, what if, for example, you wanted to have one of these elements span you know, another row uh, or another column rather? Uh, maybe the second one you want to go from here to here, all right? So what would you do then? All right, well, what you could do then in the in this case, um, obviously we probably we wouldn't want that here. That wouldn't make sense at mobile. And this is our mobile first CSS, right? So we are going to use a media query to help us achieve the span. So what we can do is we'll say, we'll give a class a span two, and then we'll come down here and we'll say span two, and then we'll say grid column, we'll say auto, forward slash span two. Now watch what happens at 550 pixels. So that's how you can create your individual grid items and you can make them span any number of columns. And you can also do this for rows as well. So just grid column here um, or grid row, you can, you can uh, create more complex layouts and they all just work with the power of the auto fit feature. Now I'm going to remove this here. Actually, I'll just I'll comment it out. And here we go. And what is the difference between auto fit and auto fill? All right. So for this, I'm going to get the help of Firefox because Firefox DevTools allow you to see um, the grid columns and 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 how they're named um, and their numbers. And so I'm just going to close this out. And I'm going to hit Control Shift I, and we'll get out this section right here. It says div container. We're going to show our grid columns, right? All right. So 
Also, to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna get rid of, I'm gonna save this, and now they're all equal. Uh, everything's kind of a little bit easier to understand. So when it comes to auto fit, which is what we're using currently, it's just going to fit it all the way up no matter what the, the, the maximum size of the browser is. Um, if we change this to auto fill, you can see the result is different. So auto fill actually looks exact and behaves exactly the same way up to this point at, at, when you compare it with auto fit. Um, it's going to you know collapse them in just the same way, but the part where it changes is auto fit will not extend these beyond that min max value of 250. Instead, it's going to create extra columns here in the grid itself. So it keeps them just lined over here. So if you didn't want them to be fluid, then you would use auto fit or auto fill as we are now. But if you want them to take up all the remaining space without creating extra grid columns, what we could do is just switch back to auto fit. And there we go. All right, everybody. So hopefully you found a usefulness out of that and you learned something. Maybe you'll start integrating it into your project so you can stop utilizing so many media queries and start using the more dynamic, flexible, less verbose way of dealing with such layouts. All right. As always, subscribe up and I'll see you guys real soon. Goodbye.